So the road that I'm on at the moment in Carantan is the D903 and this is heading right into the center of town coming along from the sort of western side heading east into the into the town of Carantan. Now this was the attack route that Easy Company took when they came into the town. F Company on their left flank were on the next road over when they moved in to take the town on the 12th of June at six o'clock in the morning. Now it was back up the road um, in this direction the Easy Company launched the attack. They started moving down here. And then from the building just there, the one that has Bar du Stad uh, written on it, that's where the German MG42, the Fauschenjäger, who was manning the MG42 in that position there, and the other Germans located on this side of the town, started to pour fire onto the men of Easy as they came down this way. Um, it was at this moment that the guys went to ground. They, um, they got into the ditches. Obviously, all these ditches have gone now. This is really modernized. The road's been smoothed out. It's, um, it, it's, it's changed a lot since, uh, since 1944. So with the guys in the ditches, they weren't moving. And it's this scene that you, we see so famously recreated in episode three of Band of Brothers, where Winters is out in the middle of the road in that hail of machine gun fire, yelling to his men to get off their ass and to and to get moving and he's you know for a man who who was um not a, a massively vocal man who didn't really uh you know raise his voice and swear this he was yelling all sorts of expletives at his men to motivate them to get them out of the trenches and to get them pushing forward he managed that the men managed to advance on this position and then they started to make their way into the center of Carantan itself now at the time you got f company on their left flank you had also got the 327th Glider Infantry Regiment pushing down the uh, pushing down the Basin a flot, which is on the eastern side of Carantan, and they were heading east to west into the heart of the town. So what we also have to remember at this point is von der Heidt, the commander of 6th Fauschenjäger Regiment, he'd only left about 100, 115 men in Carantan itself to, to defend the place. But clearly anybody who's done fighting in built up areas and sort of CQB work will know that if you're in a building, it can be a force multiplier. So you might have less men, but actually that doesn't matter because you're in these defensive positions and it's a lot harder for the attacking force to make their way in. So that was where the German advantage really came. Plus as well, they had areas pre-sighted as the Germans often did. So when they fell back from a position, they would then put in an artillery stonk, an artillery fire mission onto their previously occupied positions, knowing that the enemy would then be occupying them. So a very clever tactic on their part. I'm not gonna cover the whole battle in, in detail. Um, there's plenty of other good episodes on the likes of Paul Woodadge's World War II TV um, that detail the battle here in Carantan. Um, especially with guests on like Greg Ray, who are subject matter experts in Fauschenjäger. So go and check those out if you want to know about the in-depth battle here. But what I'm going to do is just take you for a bit of a walking tour around Carantan and show you some then and nows of the 101st as they were in and around these positions. I just panned the camera around and we can see there that was then the route that Easy Company followed down into Carantan. And we will continue our way into the city and uh, we will take a look and see what then and now we can find from here in Carantan. So we've just come to the other side of Carantan now from the um, approach that Easy Company made on the western side. If you look down there, you'll see the Bassin of Flot, and that was the approach route that 327th Glider Infantry took when they were attacking into Carantan on the 12th of June, 1944. But I just wanted to stop here because the building behind me here, that was General Maxwell Taylor's divisional headquarters the 101st after the town was captured. Quite an iconic building, um, although it just sits quietly um, just from the uh, marina, just here on this side street. But yeah, really cool and well worth checking out if you get the chance to visit Carantan, just given its significance. Now, following on from Maxwell Taylor's headquarters, I'm gonna head into Carantan, go and um, find some then and nows, try and find a couple of other places to show you um, that will hopefully be of interest. So let's go take a look. So I'm now in the main square here in Carantan. There's the war memorial there to the Great War. And there was, um, there's quite a few then and nows taken from this location. Most of them are from the medal ceremony that happened here in late June. Now the first one, tragically cut short, the Germans actually put artillery fire onto the town um, and killed some, uh, I think it killed a, a young girl and injured others. 
Then they reheld the ceremony and got the photos. So this is the, the first image here, and we see all of the officers saluting the colours, either at the start or the end of the ceremony. I'll just bring that image up there. We can still see the original buildings still there, the memorial, the building with a big green door, all still here. And this beautiful war memorial in the centre of Carantan really does provide a great focal point for these images. So the next image taken is um, a great one. It's the awards being given to the four regimental commanders from each of the 101st Airborne Division regiments. And this image was taken round about here. Well, they're all stood on parade there. It's Maxwell Taylor pins the awards on their chest. And that's as it looks today. Not a lot has changed. The archways there that, um, that really set this square apart. The front of the shop's changed a little bit. But as you can see, still fairly similar to what it was in, in 1944. Now these next ones, this, this I can't actually get to. This um, main square here in Carrington is actually used as a car park as well. So clearly some of you didn't know I was turning up today wanting to do this. <laughs> But no, in all seriousness, we can still sort of get a good um, good impression. So there's the war memorial. I'll just pull that out there. And there's some GIs sat with some of the local kids. You can still see it today. The, um, the buildings in the background behind the flags, um, they're still there, as well as the ones there just to the left of the war memorial. So nothing's really changed here on this, which is nice to see, other than it being used as a car park now. So as you walk around the War Memorial, there's another one taken of three GIs stood on the left-hand side of it. And from the looks of it, all three of them are, uh, are airborne. They've all got the jump boots and M42s on. That was taken, I'm just trying to line it up there for you. It's taken about here. Some of the, um, some of the buildings have changed somewhat. Obviously you can see there some severe battle damage from the artillery fire that was received during the, uh, the 12th and 13th from the Germans as they fought the Americans for the city. So some of the, uh, some of the buildings have changed and they do stand out, but you can still spot the, uh, the ones that fortunately remained undamaged. Now this next one's an interesting one, shows troops heading out towards Saint-Lô and um, Perrier's, um, which are out towards the southwest of the city. And it's literally taken just off of the, um, off of the town square. It's not very far at all. And that, this is the image here. You see that Dodge moving down the street and what looks like a Jeep in front. And that is the view as it appears on the 5th of June, 2023. Not a lot has changed along this road. And then the final one for, um, for the Market Square here, or for the Town Square, sorry. Um, it's just another one um, that features the War Memorial and the American soldiers here and the French civilians, French dignitaries. Now that's the, uh, that's the image, it's during one of the ceremonies here. And again, as it stands here in 2023. Now, if you've seen Band of Brothers, which if you're watching this, chances are it's pretty high that you have, um, and specifically episode three, the assault onto Carapat itself. There's a couple of interesting features um, in this square. So, it was around this location here where Major Strayer, the 2nd Battalion commander, um, asked Winters if it, was, uh, if it was safe to cross. He, yes, acknowledges, yeah, it was safe. He was stood out in the open. And then all of a sudden got hit with a ricochet um, to his, his lower leg, which understandably really pissed him off, uh, especially after everything he'd just been through uh, that morning. Um, and secondly, one thing I thought was, was a really good feature from the TV series that they that they depicted really well on the set build. So so hats off to the guys who were involved with the, the set design and the set build. But with these arches, and these really do sort of make the square here stand out. Um, and they were captured on the on the show itself, which I think was uh, was a really good nod to Carantan itself as a as a town, and really helped bring that that part of the episode to life. So the final place we're going to go to now is the area where Tipper gets injured. Uh, you may remember he goes in into a building 
um, has a quick look around, then comes back out. Then all of a sudden there's a uh, uh, either a, a, a mortar round or an artillery round that blows up and he was severely injured. Fortunately, he uh, managed to recover and uh, and made it to, to old age. But where that action happened in that courtyard just here. So if I just pan around slowly, you can see there's the arches, there's the square, and you can see the wall memorial. And that's it in relation to that main square in Karen Fan. So I've now moved down to the Ruder Holgate, and this is just off the main square. Um, there's a series of photos taken down here of 101st paratroopers moving through the, the town here in Karantan. Now I suspect these were taken after the, the counter-attack that was put in by the 6th Fauschenjäger and the, the 17th SS Panzergrenadier Division, that, their mixed camp grouper, on the outskirts of Karantan on the on 13th. Just because they look, the, the men look relatively relaxed in the photos as if they're being sort of scripted throughout it. Now the first one was taken from roughly this angle. And here's the photo, you can see a load of dog tired GIs trying to grab some shot eye on the side of the street here with a load of French civilians, more GIs, more paratroopers. But it was roughly taken from here. For the next location, we've come just a bit further down the route of Holgate and toward the railway tracks near toward where the 2nd Battalion First Aid Station was established um, after the um, guys managed to push into the town here on the, on the 12th of June. And the image here is a really interesting one. We see a couple of Jeeps moving down the street and we see a British six pounder being towed by one of them. Some medics in this from most likely the 326 medical company that was part of the 101st. And then some second battalion guys stood there from the 506 parachute infantry regiment. And the streets changed a little bit, but this building here is quite distinctive on the, on the left hand side. And we can see that here, if I just step out into the street a little bit, you can kind of get more of a feel for it. Now, due to the fighting here, it has, has changed a little bit. I'll try and line the image up. It's taken roughly, it was taken roughly from this spot here. So for this photo, I've just crossed over the other side of the street and you can really get a good idea of the, the devastation caused during the fighting here. Here's a load of guys from the 101st, most likely all the 506. I think there are actually some helmets there denoting the 502nd PIR. And it's this building here that provides the, the landmark to navigate this then and now. So if I bring that in, you see that building still stood there. But all that damage that was caused, and you now got um, this building here that's been rebuilt and altered significantly. It does give you some of an idea of just how devastating the fight was around here in June 1944. Right, I'm now pretty much at the end of the Rue, uh, Rue de Holgate. Um, you can see there, you can see the distance, the church spire, and then the Rue de Holgate leading into the main center. And behind me there are the railway tracks um, that sort of cut straight through Carantan itself. And if you can see over the road there, the building, it's the tallest building among that, those set of houses with the, the weird chimneys on the side. That was the aid station, the, the, the famous aid station that we see in episode three of Band of Brothers where Winters goes to get treated by Doc Rowe and he finds Blythe there. So that's the actual building itself, but we're not here to, to look at that because that's already been covered quite a lot in, in other ones. What I wanted to look at was this quite cool then and now. This is a M7 priest of the 14th Field Artillery Battalion and it's moving straight down that road there. If we line it up, it's um, a bit tricky with this camera, but do the best we can. So that was it in June 1944. And that's it today in June 2023. So back in the Ruder Holgate now, and there's this, uh, this next image. You see these guys from the uh, 101st, some with their bayonets on looking pretty tough. And that was taken just along here again. Quite a lot of um, buildings have changed around here. It's, um, it's really quite apparent um, that a lot of post-war redevelopment took place, especially on the roundabout and by the railway lines. And that's really altered quite considerably since 1944. It's made some of these actually pretty tricky, but when you do get them, it's, um, it's quite rewarding, as daft as that might sound. So, so now I'm gonna head back 
into uh, the main square or toward the main square of Caltex. There's a couple of um, then and nows back down here. Um, it's still yet to find, so we'll try and track those down. So it just goes to show how much has actually changed here in Carantang. So as I was walking down, I realized I was just about to miss um, one of the then and nows. And the building now apparently is a, is a cinema according to the front, which is quite cool. So that's the image. You can see one of the 326 medical company Jeeps there. Um, what looks like a captured German vehicle behind it, as well as the guys from 101st marching alongside out to the west of the town. And that image was taken roughly here. So that cinema building there being the main identifying building in the image, although it has changed a little bit since, uh, since World War II, but still retains the, uh, the five big windows and the brickwork down the side. It's just they've, they've changed the windows considerably, but still that building there, which makes this photo possible. So this final image for the roof to Holgate has um, escaped me for about 10 minutes. Finally found it. And I've got to admit, I'm really chuffed I did. Um, this is this is the image showing four badass looking paratroopers sort of patrolling up towards uh towards the camera one with his bayonet fitted um and i don't know how i how i missed this because there's some key features that are identifiable these um uh, like gate posts fence posts and this a slanted roof building but i thought i was looking at this much further down the road and i honestly thought that it was uh was, was further down towards the main square, but it's not. It's this building just here. So when I finally clocked onto that, walked all the way back up, and uh, there we go. It's uh, roughly taken from this location here. Really, really pleased about that. I spent so long looking for it. So now I'm gonna head into um, what's like the big market square and see if I can find another couple of then and nows of GIs pointing at some various town sites that, uh, again, if you've seen anything, um, anything to do with Carantan, you've probably seen these images before. So let's just try and uh, try and track them down. Right, so I'm now on the edge of the market square. If you know Carantan, you'll, you'll know roughly where I am. Uh, the main sort of town square with the war memorial is behind me down that road next to the, the, like the red carnival tent. And this was the image that I wanted to find. I've seen this for years, um, always wonder why those guys from 327th Glider Infantry pointing towards uh, the signs for Cherbourg and, and Paris and then note the bullet hole under Paris. I've always wondered, you know, where, where was this taken? And then as I was walking down, um, I noticed the building there, the, the bank, it's there in the center of the image. And I was looking at it thinking, no, that can't be it. So I looked around a little bit more and, yep. If we marry those images up, it's a bit hard from the, the perspective with this camera, but some notable features, the five main windows on the uh, on the upper floor and the five beneath it, the, the brickwork on the, on the side of the building, and then that chimney stack there. And they all line up perfectly with this building here. So I'm not sure exactly where this image was taken, but that's definitely the building in the background and I am absolutely chuffed to bits to find it. It's um, something that I've been looking for for a long time and finally had the chance to come and do it here. So really chuffed with that. Right, so I'm now just heading back to the main square for the final then and now here in Carantab. And I must admit, I didn't find this one. It was thanks to a chap on a bike who was looking for the same location. We sort of looked at it, we were on the Rue de Holgate. Um, couldn't figure it out. But then I sort of noticed something. We went back through the photos that I'd looked at and yeah, we found the spot. So sir, if you're watching this, thank you so much. Uh, otherwise I would have missed it. So what a chance to encounter like-minded folk uh, here on World War II Wayfinder. Really, really great uh, bit of cooperation there. So thank you so much for that. I, take zero credit for that, that is all your work if you're watching this. We're back in the main square and that's the, um, it's difficult with the sun at this time of day, but that's the image there. And the only reason we spotted it was because of the bomb damage, but that's the image and that's the view in 2023. I'm just outside of Carantan now and just come to look at, um, quite a cool then and now, I think. It shows something completely different, far away from, far, or far removed, sorry, from that of the 101st. But this is of this bridge just here. 
Now the, uh, the wartime photo is here and we can see an MP in a sandbag position here and another senior NCO here. You can see that he's got his horizontal white band over his, uh, on the back of his helmet and a truck with a trailer just passing over the, the bridge there. I'll just come back a little bit. It's a little hard with the shadow, unfortunately, this, with the, uh, the time of day, but, but that is the then and now from here. And one other interesting um, aspect or feature of, of this bridge, the crossing point up ahead was damaged during the fighting here. So army uh, engineers put in a uh, Bailey bridge and that bridge still stands as a footbridge to this day. So that's the bridge itself. It's uh, looking somewhat different. Been, uh, it's been reinforced since, um, since his wartime years. The Bailey Bridge was named after Major John E. Tucker. You can see him here in his memorial, this lovely memorial here that gets um, not the amount of recognition it deserves. But he was one of the engineers here that led the, uh, led the guys who constructed it, but he was killed here um, during its construction, unfortunately. He was killed um, as a result of German shelling, but fortunately now, this, uh, this wonderful memorial, that's now, uh, you know, here forever um, as, a, as a reminder of Major Tucker and the other men who, who served here getting this bridge constructed. And um, it's great because it's even marked on Google Maps. So if you want to come to Carantan, you can find this spot really really straightforward it's really easy to get to